You know, tonight, we're going to go back about 30 years to a time of big hair, acid wash, and leather high tops. <laughs> we recently discovered a volume of old tapes that capture a rather famous Manchester nightclub from the 1980s, a place that played host to big names like Amy Nan, haha, -ha, and the Ramones. That's right, Sean McDonald tracked down some of those old performers and found out this club may be gone, but it's sure not forgotten. <laughs> This journey back in time started as I was researching an infamous punk singer from the 1980s. That's Gigi Allen. He was born in Lancaster, New Hampshire. He would go on to be one of the most notorious performers of all time. He started his career in local clubs, including one in Manchester that stuck out. Turns out it was one of the biggest stops in the Northeast. You see, back then, live clubs were king, hair was higher, and you got your music at the local record store. Best heavy metal in town. The only store around to sell secondhand albums and cassettes. The place to see a band was the Casbah, known as New Hampshire's premier video rock club. Little did I know that old white building at 200 Elm Street, I've been by a million times, was once a live music destination. I think the club scene, especially here in New England in the 80s, that, that was the heyday for sure. Bob Boyd of Nashua used to videotape the bands. I think I was there every Friday and Saturday night for about a year straight, just blowing off steam, meeting the bands, shooting videos. The Casbah attracted major names like Till Tuesday, the Ramones, and Joan Jett. <laughs> Neil Schneider, the original owner, says he turned an old mattress company into the Casbah. And the name came from hearing the famous Clash song on the radio. Ooh, thank you. To this prime, we said, hey, that's it. That's the, that's the name. Casbah being sort of a, a retreat, place of comfort, place where people can just, in those days, chill. Neil was known for bringing in both major acts and local bands. The local bands serve two purposes. One, they'd be the opening act. Two, they'd bring their fan base in. If you came here back then, you probably saw Kathy Maisk. She was a Casbah regular. Dancing, drinking, big 80s hair. <laughs> Kathy still lives in the area and agreed to come back to the old location almost 30 years later. It's bizarre. <laughs> but there's like exercise equipment in the cast lab. <laughs> this was truly a trip down memory lane. Kathy used to hang around with the bands and yes, Gigi Allen too. She even had her birthday party here. It was like family. You could always come in here and there would be somebody that you knew here. You knew there was gonna be friends here. From 1980 to 1987, they rocked the Casbah until it switched to new owners. After many name changes, even vacancy, the old Casbah is now the training station. What used to be a stage and tables is now home to martial arts classes. Opening up that center and you should feel a relaxation. Owners Terry Dow and Christina Davidson, both martial arts experts, worked for months ripping out layers of 80s carpet to turn it into a workout club. It was pretty scary because if you saw this place, um, what it looked like before, it was awful. It was, uh, it was a mess. About the only thing left of the old Casbah is a little note written on the back threshold and the occasional walk-in. When we first moved in, we, had, we actually had a, um, a drunk come in off the street and say, where's the bar? And he's walking around staggering. We've had a few, yes. Uh, the first couple months of being open, just about everybody that walked through the door was looking for the Where's the bar? Uh, <laughs> band members were coming in, trying to book gigs. Boys with guns, full of beer.
You may be wondering what happened to some of those local bands that were hoping the Casbah might spring them into stardom. We did too. <laughs> You know, we're very active. You know, we weren't just standing at the microphone singing. We're dancing around, jumping around, that sort of thing. So that was sort of the kind of band that we were. Well, I'm not good looking, but my future looks good. Dana Schmitz was the singer for The Memos, a regular Casbah act. They opened for big 80s names like Till Tuesday and Tommy Two-Tone, the 8675309 guy. We got to meet people. I mean, that was the big thing. We weren't getting rich, but we got to you know, meet people and have a good time. And The band eventually broke up. Dana now lives in Massachusetts. While he still plays privately, his day job is more high tech. And I find there's a lot of former musicians who somehow end up in IT. And that's where I am now. Oh, absolutely. We, we definitely wanted to be rock stars. Doug Bover also played the Casbah under names like the Human Duplicators. It was a very strange setup. Sometimes from stage, you're staring at a pole in front of you. <laughs> Doug lives in Manchester. While he still jams on the guitar, his day job is designing websites. I wouldn't say it was the, the, the best part of my life, but it was surely a good part of my life. It was a lot of fun, absolutely. Well, we'd like to thank you all for coming to the Casbah to see us tonight. And that is Johnny Earthquake at the Casbah in 1984. He used to sport a long beard. During the Casbah period, the stage was right in front of these mirrors here. Which he still had when he returned to the old location for us, even offering a quick tour downstairs. This was the dressing room. All these years later, the Johnny Earthquake Band, it's still going. He even agreed to take the spot where the old stage once stood to rock the Casbah one more time. Play us out, Johnny. This place is still half empty. Where are all your friends? Don't matter that it's